Hello, everybody. I hope. <laughs> Just waiting for everything to go live. I think we're live. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me. I see Elizabeth and Rhonda and Maiden and Jojo and Ellen and Rachel. Ellen, let me know if you got my email. I sent you an email. <laughs> and Liz, hi everybody. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I know it's kind of early for some of you and it's late for some of you. Okay, you can hear and see. Okay, awesome. That is good news. <laughs> Yay! Thank you all for being here. Um, we, I know, did I change the title? I didn't change the title of the live stream, but, oh, I didn't get your reply. Okay, I'll look, Ellen, and make sure. Hi, Jen! <laughs> um, today, we're making 1970s barrel chairs, and I posted a picture on my Facebook and on my Instagram if you want to see an example of those. I'm not quite sure how to put a sample on StreamYard, um, but uh, they're like chairs made from barrels, like literal like wine barrels. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna be making. And uh, I, I think it'll go well. We're also making this in half scale because we're working on the Fairfield, which is in half scale and um, so really tiny. <laughs> and what you're seeing here is a pattern that I sketched up yesterday because I wanted to make sure at least I had an idea that this would maybe work. Um, so I did like a little sample. And um, so if you go to the description box underneath this video, you can click, you can click it and download it. And I have the half scale if you're making half scale along with me. And then I went ahead and Sorry, camera's backwards again. I <laughs> went ahead and um, made it a um, 12 scale as well, because I know not a ton of people work in half scale. But um, you can also size this up again 200% if you want to make for play scale or Barbie scale. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm missing comments. I think this will be a really fun one to make, especially since we're going with a 1970s theme. I mean, you see barrel chairs and a barrel table and you, I mean, 1970s all around. <laughs> so um, if you want to um, print this, you can go along with me. I'm going to be doing the first part of it, like getting started with the pattern. And then I'm going to do like one of those like um, cooking show swaps where like I'm gonna do the first part of the project and then I'm gonna swap it out during the boring part for like a more finished piece so hopefully I can get something close to what looks like an actual barrel chair by the end of the stream so <laughs> instead of you having to watch me do a ton of the little um, like the planks of wood so that's my plan <laughs> And I'm also, I'm going to make me smaller. Nope, that didn't work. That one? There we go. <laughs> Still getting used to it, but I think we're getting better. I think the lighting is a little bit better. My patrons can probably tell you the lighting has been a struggle in the last few streams. Uh, let's see. Barrel chairs, big nostalgia. Yeah. I actually have never sat in a real barrel chair, but I did know of their existence and they were suggested in one of my live streams and I was like, yes, that sounds super fun. I've never seen barrel chair, barrel, they're going to be a uh, tongue twister, barrel chairs in um, miniature. I've never seen a miniature set of a barrel chair and barrel table. So that'll be interesting. Um, if you have seen them, let me know. But it was just one of those, like, you know, you've seen a million chairs and couches and things, but it's always the, um, the weird things that I have never seen in miniature that I'm the most excited to create. So when I heard 
barrel chair set, then, you know, I was like, yes, let's do that for sure. <laughs> so this will go in the attic of the Fairfield and that's going to be like a little gaming space and hopefully we can make like some miniature game boards or something to go up there. And so this will be a really good table to put some games on, I think. <laughs> hit the like button. Yes, definitely hit the like button if you are liking the stream so far. I know it's been like a minute, <laughs> but hit the like button for me. That always helps me out. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and get started with cutting out this pattern. I know my setup's a little weird. You're looking at like the right, the, the top left angle down, but that was the easiest way for me to set up my iPad holder thing. And if you saw my Instagram or Facebook post, I ended up injuring my back just a little bit this week. Um, I think I just like moved the wrong way. And so I have like a little bit of a muscle injury. It's a lot better this morning, but, um, so I was like, okay, the easiest place for me to set this up without doing too much is to put it over here. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm missing quite a few comments, but if you have questions and I don't see it the first time, always make sure to post it again and I will try my best to answer questions. And we'll just, I'm gonna try, let's see. Okay, I'll figure out where I need to put my hands. And Oh, I see. Any updates on Beetlejuice House? Okay, so yes, big update on Beetlejuice House. <laughs> um, I have the base. I had um, the same person that made the base for my Adams Family House made the base for my Beetlejuice House. It was much simpler. It wasn't like a cabinet um, type base like uh, the Adams was. So it went a little bit quicker and so it's ready and I have it. And um, so that's gonna be something I'm gonna show in the next Beetlejuice video, which should be next week. It should come out on Friday or Saturday, depending on how long the video takes me. It won't be like me working on the base, but I'll show it to you. And then I was thinking, okay, so you know how we've always done, um, here, let me tell you the next step and then I'll, I'll get back to Beetlejuice, I promise. So I thought because we're doing a barrel chair, it would be easiest to work with a paper towel holder because it's already um, curved. And that saves us from having to curve some paper or, um, you know, just messing with that. Because once you start trying to curve actual like chipboard, it'll start um, creasing and making some ugly lines. So paper towel roll or toilet paper roll is already curved and it definitely will save you on that. So, um, if you need any relief, lidocaine. I've been um, doing like some um, like heat and then I think I took, I took a leave and that helped. That's what my husband is all, he's all about the leave. <laughs> So um, I did a few things and then my sister was an athlete and so she's telling me I need to put ice, which I believe her. I know she totally knows what she's talking about because she was an athlete, but I, I hate it. It's almost worse than the back pain to do ice. It's so cold. So I'm going to be cutting off a length of the roll here. And if you're doing a 12th scale, I'm not sure if a 12th scale will fit all the way around a paper towel roll. So you may have to kind of Frankenstein together a piece of, um, a piece of like couple pieces of paper towel roll, but they're already, uh, um, you know, curved, so it helps. <laughs> so then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Kind of place it. I'm trying to avoid these um, little seams that are created by the paper towels. Um, but I mean, it's not a big deal if I hit them. So 
I'm just trying to kind of line it up the best that I can. And then I am going to outline it with pencil just so it's a little bit easier to cut. I feel like my hands are a little shaky this morning, so it's just, you know, me trying to hold the pattern on there. It's just not gonna, not gonna work well. Um, back to Beetlejuice. Um, so my thought is, you know how we've done Adam's October? Um, well, this Ox October is going to be just already messy for me. So I have, um, hopefully, if everything goes well, we will have the Dallas Miniature Show. And I will be there, and I will have a table. And then that should be the month, again, if everything goes well, that I'm delivering the Adams Family House to the museum. So it's still going to basically be Adams October, because I'm going to be focused on that project completely. But I was like, I feel like, you know, I should be doing something big for Beetlejuice. So I was thinking about what about Beetle Gust? So like August, but Beetle Gust. You know how like in the movie, if you've seen it, they can't quite figure out how to say Beetlejuice because it has a G in it. And they're like Beetle Geist. Um, and so it would be like Beetle Gust. So let me know what you think. I think that would be fun. Um, and then I'm wondering if, uh, like maybe starting to do month focused projects every now and then, not every month, but month focused pro pro projects would be a good thing. So maybe like um, Fairfield February or something where I just work on the Fairfield the entire February, like do um, edited videos and things like that. So let me know what you think. Uh, I have a copper fit with insertable ice packs. You can heat the pack in the microwave, but cold helps reduce swelling and heat, heat helps relax muscles. I have to look that up. Copper fit. Um, ooh, they're going by fast. <laughs> I'm going to uh, cut this out real quick while I'm looking. Okay, sounds like y'all are liking the beetle gust idea. <laughs> I really do like, um, that's why I'm thinking, um, I saw Luca Ace said, uh, love the idea of beetle gust, just don't want you to get burned out by working on the same thing for extended times. I, I really like doing it every now and then because I feel like, like when I change projects, I'm just cutting out the pattern. Um, when I change product, projects, I feel like I'm constantly like putting stuff away and then I get the project back out and then I put something else away and then I get the project back out. And so every now and then I think it is nice for me to just say, okay, this is my focus all month long. It can just, you know, explode all over the studio and have stuff everywhere and I don't have to like pick it up and I can just keep going and keep making videos on that one project. I do think if I was, you know, doing it constantly, there's definitely a possibility I could get um, burnt out. But I would definitely, I, I, I've gotten fairly okay at like making, feeling that burnout and knowing when I'm like, my brain is like, nope, no more. <laughs> okay, so this is our little pattern. And it's already curling up because it's cut out of the um, paper towel holder or paper towel roll. <laughs> and then um, part of the pattern, where'd the pattern go? Says glue on the side. And so this side is a little bit thicker than this side. And so you're just going to overlap it and add some glue. And this is going to, these two sides are gonna be the back of the chair. I always say, do what makes you happy. I'll be here to watch no matter what. Well, thank you. I, I do, um, you know, I, I do try to um, make sure that it's something that I want to do and um, am excited for because I think you can definitely um, tell sometimes in videos, um, you know, even on other channels where you like, you know, you know when someone's heart is just not in it. 
and I think that comes through on video. So I want to make sure that I'm I'm being true to to the miniature excitement. <laughs> Yes, my back is feeling better this morning. I'm just trying to be super careful and um, cautious. So probably after the live stream, I'm just going to go relax and play video games maybe. <laughs> and just kind of not do too much. Although, how did I lose my, oh, I lose my glue cover all the time. All right, so... Now I'm just going to, I put some glue on the back of the chair here and I'm just going to glue it closed. Just like so. Uh, I have three different projects that I'm working on. My husband gets so frustrated with me, but it prevents me from getting burned out. Yep, that's exactly why I have so many projects because there there are times where I walk in and I'm just like, I really, I can't work on this project and be excited about it today, so I need to grab something else. And that's also why, you know, I love the prompts because when I'm just really, really burned out on doing something big, um, the prompts are great because, you know, you can make that as big or as small as you want, you know, it's just a single word. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some masking tape and I'm going to cover that edge that I just glued and this is going to kind of help it keep hold while the glue is drying. And I was using Fabrifix glue. We're going to play the, <laughs> the where is the camera game with my hands here. So I'm just going to cover this up. And whenever I do the... Um, the barrel slats, the wood barrel slats, I guess, um, then that'll kind of be covered and it'll be just a little bit of a smoother transition over that hump that I created. And when you, um, when you're uh, working with half scale, all those little bumps and little extras um, really start to like build up. And so um, when you're working in half scale, you're just really trying to reduce the bulk. You're trying to reduce bumps because it just starts showing up. <laughs> my next project will be painting and organizing my studio after I move. I'm so excited. That is so exciting. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay. So I've just basically wrapped. I mean, you can still see there's a little edge right there, but that's okay. It's a little bit smoother than it would have been beforehand. So here's our barrel chair and I'll show you with our skeleton resident in a half scale chair. Here's how he looks. So when he sits in it, he'll be sitting like so. And if you're new to the streams, these uh, little skeleton guys are who's going to live in the Fairfield. And so that's why I always use them as uh, my reference for making furniture. They are a little bit bigger than half scale um, because a half scale six foot person would be three inches. One, two, three. So they're about three and a half inches. So these are very tall skeletons. Uh, are you tufting the inside back of the chairs? Probably not. If I was doing it in half scale or in 12th scale, probably. But um, in half scale, I'm just, I'm just gonna do just a regular um, upholstery. <laughs> and I grabbed fabric, so. We are all ready to go with that. So that's how I'm kind of judging um, my half scale chair. And if you don't want as much barrel showing, you can always you kind of adjust your own pattern so you can make this shorter. Or if you want more barrel showing, you can make this a little bit deeper. So 
whatever you want for your personal design. Okay. So now the next part is just a little bit tricky. This camera is tricky. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few little cuts about halfway up this bottom part right here. And this is going to help me curve the bottom part in so that it has more of a barrel look. So I'm probably going to put going to be a little bit more difficult where I've got the tape because it's doubled. So I'm doing four cuts that are across from each other. So it's kind of cut in quarters. I'm not going all the way through because I want it to still be connected. And then I'm going to cut halfway between those cuts. So I end up with a total of eight going around the ring of the chair. I'll show you a close up of that. So if you see the cuts here, they don't have to be perfectly spaced out. We just want them to overlap a little bit so we get that barrel shape at the bottom where it just slightly um, curves in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start every other one, I'm just kind of bending in slightly so that they'll kind of go behind the opposite ones. So every other tab I'm bending in slightly. It like very slightly. You almost may not even be able to see. And then um, the two, then they're just going to kind of, I mean, <laughs> kind of hard to explain, but you're just going to start kind of smushing it in. And some of the tabs are going to go slightly over the other tabs. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. Tell me if you can see that. So this, this one right here, this tab is going slightly behind these other two tabs. Let me know if that makes sense. <laughs> so let me know if that, if you can see that, if that makes sense. And then you're just going to do that with every other tab and slightly bend them in so you have like a, a cone. It's not going to be a full cone, but just start of a cone starting at the bottom to make that barrel shape. Okay. Yes. Tapering. That's the word. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do little bits of tape. I tried the first time I did this to tape it all the first time and I felt like some of my tapers um, started to kind of come undone as I was working. So this one's kind of tapered in so I'm just going to add my tape and this is probably, this piece is too long. So let me cut it off because all I really need to do is tape the bottom. So I'll save that piece for the next taper. I'm just going to go around the bottom and that's going to hold my taper that I just created in place. So then I'm going to go to the next area, kind of squish that together to where I like it. And then tape it in place. And I'm using some pretty thin masking tape. So, um, if you're you like something thicker like duct tape is going to cause a lot of bulk so just make sure you're using a, a thin tape and you should be good this one back here is a little bit more difficult on the back of the chair just because we've got a lot of thick material overlapping back here but still possible what brand of masking tape do you use because i keep getting really awful ones that won't come off or don't stick. I will look up. Um, I, I'm really liking this one. It was probably the cheapest one. <laughs> um, but I will look it up and I will um, put it in the description box after the um, stream. Let me write a note real quick. I will look up the one I purchased because it was like a, a group, like a maybe like eight rolls in one. 
Okay, so then I'm gonna do my last one. It's it's looking barrel-y, barrel, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, let me get one more taped. And it's not gonna be a huge, huge difference. It's really, it's really just slight. Um, if you do it too much, it's not gonna have that same barrel appearance. So it's pretty, it's a pretty slight taper. Okay, so can you see how it's going more at an angle down now? And it's kind of coming in this way to create the bottom of that barrel. Thank you for the super chat, Cosmo Fire. <laughs> And thank you all for being here and and hanging out with me today. I was glad I was I was like I don't want to cancel the stream because like I just didn't think I could stand at my table, but I was like, you know what? We haven't done furniture in a little bit. We'll go ahead and do it today and then I can sit and relax. <laughs> okay, so masking tape link. Yeah, it's probably if you are, you know, looking for something super duper sticky, um, this tape is not going to be for you. But if you're looking for something that comes off pretty easy and, um, you know, is pretty thin. So some people may think this is a not great quality masking tape, but for what I'm using for, um, it's working pretty well. <laughs> So the other thing I did, I didn't really do the same thing to the top of the chair. All I did is I just start kind of curling it inwards. So I'm just using my fingers and pressure to just curl it in. And it kind of does a similar look to it. So you can kind of manipulate this because it's less material to curve inwards and you don't have to go through all of that cutting tabs and it'll still look like a barrel. <laughs> I'm not in too much pain today. Um, so uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to make sure that I was doing the, the most that I could to, to continue to be careful and continue to keep getting better. <laughs> All right, so now we have our shape that we like. And it's it's curving in a barrel shape. And uh, this is um, a paper towel roll because it's already curved, so it's helping us a lot. Don't have to get the curve ourselves, which is great. So this is... Um, chipboard but honestly probably like some I already have been using this um, but some cereal box um, uh, material might work well will probably work better be easier to cut and it's going to be thinner and half scale so I'm using chipboard just because I grabbed it off the shelf close by um, but cereal box material would probably work even better so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure this is as circular as possible. So I'm just kind of bending it, making sure that I haven't like gotten it out of shape or anything. And then I am going to add glue to the bottom of it to create the bottom of the barrel. Do you happen to design some of the movie sets? Cause they're very detailed. I have not, um, but I did at one point, um, work for a theater set designer in Dallas and I built the sets that she had designed um, so that the builders could build them a little bit easier and so that was really fun and that was before I even purchased the Adams Family Dollhouse and I had just missed building. I loved building um, uh, models and things in school and so um, 
I ended up talking with this set designer and um, that was so fun because, you know, in theater, you know, the sets can get wild and they're so fun and so interesting. So um, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> save all my cereal boxes because of you. Yeah, my sister actually needed cereal boxes recently, so she came and got all my cereal boxes. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that as the glue is drying, it is as circular as I can get it. I mean, they're not going to be perfect, and that's okay. I'm just trying to do the best the best circle that I can do. And then this is where it's, it's easier to cut cereal box material with scissors as well. This is not so, um, not so easy. This is a little bit thicker than that. So I'm gonna let that dry for a couple seconds. My name is Grace. I'm a huge fan. I saw your Adam Stanley project. Your videos are amazing. Inspired me for my project, the Mallory Towers dollhouse. That's awesome. I wish we could like share photos like in chat, but I understand the reason that YouTube doesn't allow that, but like it would be great if I could see what y'all are working on now too. That would be awesome. Okay, so let me make sure this is looking good. So I'm going to cut the bottom off. This glue takes hold pretty well, but if you're using tacky glue, you may have to wait a while <laughs> for it to dry before you can cut the part off or you're just going to be fighting with it the whole time. So um, I'm using the Fabrifix and it just, I call it whole, cold hot glue is what I call it because um, it, it grabs almost as quickly as hot glue. But it's not hot. So now we have a little base on our barrel chair. Like so but we also have to make the seat. So on the pattern, there's this circle up here. And now depending on how you um, shaped your chair, this may not fit perfectly, but I wanted to give a, um, a reference for you to at least get started on creating it. So you may have to make it a little bit bigger. You may have to cut off some edges. Um, especially if it, it if you didn't get it glued down perfectly in a circle, um, then you'll you'll be able to kind of work with it. Um, the glue is Fabrifix, or it's also called Fabritac. It's the same it's the same glue from what I can tell. I've read all of the um, stuff on the back, and I think it even comes from the same um, company. So Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac. It does have a, um, it does have an, a, a fume. It does have a fumey smell. I don't really smell it anymore and I have a filter running. So um, doesn't really bother me, but I do like, cause I know some people are smell sensitive, which I am. Um, so it does have a smell to it. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out this little circle. Um, the next Beetlejuice uh, video will be next week. It'll be next Friday. And then all of August is going to be Beetlejuice focused. So I'm very excited about that. I'm going to have to start planning because it's July. <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, that'll be in a while. Uh, no. <laughs> it's soon. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, now I'm going to, actually, I'm going to trace this. Um, and I'm going to go around. Doesn't have to be super perfect because, like I said, we might end up cutting the edges off anyway. So I've got our circle. And cut that out. And again, this would be a lot easier with cereal box material. Um, it's acetone based, but hey, that means if it gets all gunky at the bottom, you can thin it with acetone. Correct. Yeah, that is nice. Just be careful with the acetone too, because that also has a smell and it will eat the paint right off of your desk. <laughs> so I have experience with that. Actually, it ate the paint off of my um, nightstand because I was doing, I was working on my nails in bed probably like where I shouldn't. And yeah, so now I've got a nice bare spot where the paint came off. <laughs> All right, so this circle, it's going to stick out over the edge and that's totally fine because once we get it glued on, we can cut it off. And so my circle cutting was not perfect. So I'm just kind of rotating it to where I feel like it's gonna fit up against the back the best. And then I can glue it on. Um, this is gonna be covered up by my uh, um, upholstery. So I'm not worrying too much about how it looks against the back. But if you were concerned about that, you could always put like um, just a little line of glue or something back here to kind of cover up any of the um, the openings or you could just cut it again until you were happy with it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm holding it in the direction I know I want to glue it on. I'm going to put glue all the way across the back. like so, and then I'm going to put glue on the top here, kind of fiddly, trying to do both at the same time. There we go. It's all going to get covered up and Mod Podged in a bit, so I'm just trying to make sure that it sticks. Just get enough glue on there so that it sticks. So then I'm going to push it up against the back of the seat. And so there's glue underneath here, grabbing onto the bottom of the circle, and there's glue at the back against the back wall, kind of holding onto the back of the circle. So the whole circle is glued in, it's just I put glue in two different places. <laughs> Ramen noodles sound really good. <laughs> there's a lot of new people who have come in Thank you for joining me and welcome. I see several familiar names. <laughs> okay. So once that kind of takes hold, I can carefully cut around and um, cut off any of the excess cardboard that's sticking out. Now this may end up making the base look kind of weird shaped and um, that's what happened to mine. But then once we go back and put some of the wood slats, which is actually just gonna be paper on it, I think it, you know, it kind of helps it a little bit. So. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is take my scissors and you can also kind of shape the base, I should say that. Um, so I'm gonna kind of hold it and this, this glue, even though it takes hold, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit. So I'm just trying to make sure that like I'm squishing it in places just to make sure that it's the best shape that I can get it in half scale. It's really hard to get something um, perfect, but you know, 
we don't, we don't worry about perfect on this channel. It's okay. <laughs> so we'll go, I'm just going to go around slowly and I'm still holding on to the circle because the glue is not 100% completely dry. Um, you can let it dry. I'm just trying to hopefully be able to make a full chair in the live stream. So I'm just kind of pushing it on the dry times here. <laughs> Are barrel chairs a 1970s thing? Yes. Yep, and that's the style of the Fairfield. So that's why we're we're going barrel chairs today. So now we got the bottom and the seat of our little barrel chair. Ta -da. <laughs> Uh, why did you glue it down before you posted it? How will you hide the edges of the fabric? So in my um, photo reference that I put up on Instagram and on um, Facebook, there you go. <laughs> um, the edges of the fabric kind of go around the, um, the outside of the barrel, I guess. And so I'm going to kind of play with that. I really haven't practiced the upholstery, so that'll be interesting. But I may also just kind of make it look like they hand stitched uh, like a back piece and a bottom and just kind of sat it on there. So I'm going to kind of play around with it and see what happens. Um, upholstery is a tricky thing where you just kind of, kind of figure it out, <laughs> or at least me. Um, and also it's like, it's, it's like a, the, in my reference picture, it's a leathery texture and it is, um, it's got like brads on it. I don't know how to put it on screen here. I've got it on my computer screen, but it's got like, um, I think they're called brads or like nails holding it in. Um, and that's going to be difficult to do in one twenty fourth. So, <laughs> all right. So now it's time to make the very distinctive um, wood slats that go like vertically on the barrel. Are you ever tempted to make human sized furniture out of cardboard? Um, there's a lot of things in miniature that I make that I think would be awesome. Like if I could just make it in full scale, um, maybe, maybe one day I will like, I'm like, that would be a great video title making my miniatures design in real life. That would be quite a project. <laughs> would a seat cushion work here? Um, yeah, I think it'll probably end up being pretty close to a seat cushion type of design for it. <laughs> uh, would flat pin heads be too big for this scale? They'd probably be just slightly too big. Um, so I what I would do if I really wanted the look of little pins in half scale is I would just get like the tiniest little needle, pin needle type um, spot and do silver paint. Very, 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 very tiny. So um, that's what I would probably do. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? We're doing the wood stuff. Okay, let me grab my paper. So this is um, leftover wallpaper from my last video. So I'm just going to continue to use this. This is just plain computer paper that I printed out the wallpaper on and then I aged it. Any type of paper will work on this. I'm using computer paper, one, because it will it's thinner than cardstock, so we're keeping down the bulk, which is good in half scale. And um, also, it's going to be easier for me to warp it into the shape that I want. So because cardstock is a little bit more stiff, um, it will try to stay as straight as possible and you may have a harder time um, getting it to do what you want it to do. So I'm just going to hand cut these. Um, you can get out the straight cutter if you want, but um, actually I'm going to do it from this side. I'm just going to hand cut these because I'm not worrying about it too much. Barrel chairs are fun, so we're just we're just going with with fun. And so this is maybe let me see. So probably it's 
three sixteenths, three sixteenths inch wide. And I'm sure barrels have different thicknesses of um, planks. <laughs> Or maybe they don't. Maybe it's a standardized thing. I'm not quite sure. But I'm just going with what I think will work in the scale. And I'm just going to end up cutting several of these. And I'm just going to work at, at a small section at a time. This one's a little bit too thick. I'm just eyeballing it. But um, you can use a... Uh, a cutter with a blade if you want to make them all the same size uh, or make that process easier. <laughs> uh, let's see, is something not working? Is the pattern not working? Let me know. Okay, so this part is, where's my other glue? I don't know where my other glue went. Probably I do this with tacky glue. Let me go see if I can find it real quick. So tacky glue is going to be um, a little bit better for this than Fabri-Tac because Fabri-Tac, um, like it's good glue and it takes hold quickly, but it doesn't spread out and it's a little bit harder to see where it's at. So you want to be able to glue down these little strips of paper as best as you can because um, whenever you start to do the Mod Podge, whatever's not glued down will um, start to bubble up. Oh, they're talking about tagging each other. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure, has anyone downloaded the pattern? And is it like, if it's not working, let me know. <laughs> okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on a section at a time. And because the barrel part of the chair is going to be the most prevalent on the back, I am just going to start there. So I'm going to cover as much as I can with the tacky glue. You can also do this with Elmer's glue. You just want to get as much of this paper glued down as you can so that the Mod Podge step is easier. And if you do have a part that starts warping up, just wait till the Mod Podge is just starting to dry to where you can touch it and then just push those pieces down. That's what I did. You might have a few lumpy spots, but it's a barrel, so it'll be okay. And then I'm going to start in the center, just trying to get this lined up as best as I can and I'm going to push every single part of the paper into the glue and this is what's going to make sure that my strip of paper is glued down as best as possible as best as I can get it and I might get glue on my fingers during this part that's okay and then I'm going to put one next to it and I'm just leaving the smallest gap I know barrels don't really have a lot of gaps like that's the beauty of barrels and like the amazing part of it if you've never seen how they put together a wine barrel you should definitely like look it up it's pretty cool <laughs> like it's amazing um but um i'm leaving just a little bit of a line there just so that you can see my wood um that i'm making it look like wood planks there we go <laughs> Uh, we are learning the YouTube. <laughs> that works. Yeah, I'm still constantly learning too. There's things that, you know, I've been doing this for four or five years now, and there'll still be something that's like, what? <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Um, so there's not like a, I mean, there are definitely videos out there on how to do different things on YouTube, but I guess I just need to watch them. <laughs> Any plans to work with clear acrylic to make water again in the near future? Your Adams Family Aquarium turned out well, I thought. Um, yeah, I think um, I'd like to do some more with resin because I do think it makes um, really interesting 
I mean, it's a really great uh, product to work with. Um, and actually, there might be some in the next video with uh, Beetlejuice, but I just have to uh, kind of figure out exactly what I want to do because um, the next video should be, as long as everything goes well, should be that wall um, that holds the sculptures um, and has that like blue wall. So I may be using some um, resin to do that. So I'm just going to go around my barrel chair and add my paper like so. And as you can see, like there's going to be some areas where it lumps up just a little bit because of the masking tape. And that's why it's best to have as little masking tape as possible and um, to have it be thin. <laughs> that's true. You can never stop learning no matter how good you are at something. And that's one thing I love about miniatures is there's always something, a new technique or a new process to learn. <laughs> and I like that part about it. Okay, so I put glue on the underside of these pieces and I'm just going to fold them over the top so that I have just a very nice finish on the top of the barrel chair. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. going to put a little bit of glue and then fold it over like so and then I'm just going to keep going around now it does get a little bit tricky to fold it over on these edges but I just kind of cut it off and folded it inwards um, and then when I do the upholstery it's going to cover it up so I'm not worrying about it too much if you're not planning on doing upholstery, you may have to work with it a little bit more, or you may have to do a separate line of wood slats on the inside. So it just kind of depends on what your plan is um, regarding the inside of the chair. <laughs> so. All right, so now we're going to do the cooking show magic where I swap it out for a finished one. <laughs> well, not finished, but closer to being finished. So this is how my, this was my practice one from last night where I got the pattern. And as you can see, I did the paper all the way around. And here you can see how it's folded over. So there we go. Line goes up fold over and it's kind of at a weird angle but all this should eventually be covered up and then these are just shorter pieces that go all the way around here creating our little barrel <laughs> and then I covered everything with some Mod Podge I just use matte Mod Podge and um, that just kind of made sure that the paper was going to stay down when I was painting. Anything that kind of bubbled up, I could take care of before I started messing with the paint. So that's why I like doing a layer of Mod Podge. So there are going to be a few wrinkles. There's a wrinkle here, and that's because... Come on. There we go. <laughs> and that's because I did not use Tacky Glue. I used Fabri-Tac. And... Um, so, uh, yeah, so if I had used tacky glue, this would have gone a little bit, a little bit smoother. <laughs> so this is the base of the chair, how the chair is looking. And I'm wondering if we should, I think we should go ahead and do the legs. Let me grab, I did not grab the toothpicks or my easy cutter. So let me go do that real quick. Could you use wood looking contact paper and cut it in slats or would that be too thick? I think if you were doing it in 12th scale, that would be a really good idea or at least something to try out because that would save you some painting processes. Um, I would also paint the under part of the chair first. So this part that we made from the paper towel holder, um, I would paint that first before you did the contact paper. But if you do try it, let me know what you think. Let me get um, toothpicks real quick.
Okay. Trying to stand up as straight as possible. <laughs> and I'm trying to avoid uh, crossing my legs because I do that all the time and I know that's not good. Uh, I'm still building the Victorian Allison Jr. That's awesome. I, I want to see your projects you're working on right now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, if you saw my sample or my inspiration on Instagram or Facebook, um, they just have like little peg feet that stick out from underneath the barrel. So I'm just gonna use toothpicks. Those are gonna be in scale for the half scale. If you're doing a 112 scale, you probably wanna do um, like barbecue skewers or some kind of dowel rod type thing. So. <laughs> um. <laughs> Rachel is our babysitter. <laughs> yeah, Rachel helps me. Um, like sometimes YouTube will hold comments if it thinks it's not a good comment. And it's hard for me to get to those and approve those if for some reason YouTube is wrong. And then Rachel can also help me see, um, see questions if I miss them. So everyone say thank you to Rachel. She helps me out a lot. <laughs> Maybe some of the thinner scrapbook paper with wood grain that has been scaled down to six by six could work. It possibly could work. Like they have the smaller pads of paper. Okay, so I need to kind of figure out where I'm going to put these. Oh, I also need an awl. Did y'all catch that I got all right in the in the last video? Let me get my awl. So um, I got to kind of figure out where to put it, put the feet. So I'm just, this, this is the part I haven't done yet. So we're going to figure this part out together. So I think I'm just going to kind of put them in what would be the four corners. I know um, circles don't have corners, but you know what I mean. Oh, see, I'm off. You want to check the back of your chair because there's definitely a back and there's definitely a front. So I'm probably going to line up my two back chairs with, or my two back feet. They're going to be directly underneath these two corners. So when I put them down here, they're going to be underneath these two sides. That's my plan. So I wasn't looking at the back of my chair and that would have been completely off center, which again, it's not a bad thing. If you get it off center, it can still be a loved miniature, but I'm going to try in my planning ahead of time to try and get it as centered as possible. And then I'm going to try and match it similarly here at the front. So. We'll, we'll just, hopefully that'll, that'll work great. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my all and I am going to, <laughs> can we get a demonstration of Ara attempting to pronounce all please for the parents? Um, yeah, I did practice before that part of the voiceover. I was like, all, 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 y'all. It was when people said that I needed to say y'all without the y, all, just all. I still want to say all or owl. I don't know why. So I'm just kind of going through and making this hole bigger and bigger. You can also use a Dremel if you have a Dremel. And just go slow. I'm not putting a ton of pressure because if I start really putting a ton of pressure on here, it could possibly poke through the bottom and the top and my finger. <laughs> uh, look at my comment before you do that. Oh, hold on. Make a golf ball tee and put the center. So, 
Oh, I see. I, I see what you're saying. Um, so you could definitely do a different type of base. So kind of like a single, like a kind of like a cake stand type base. And if you had a golf tee, that would probably definitely work in, oops, in um, half scale. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go with the legs for, um, from my inspiration. Um, but that would work too. Yeah, pointy thing. <laughs> On Long Island, we pronounce it with 16 W's. All right, so I should have got my Dremel ready because these like to take a while. Again, this will go a little bit faster if you ended up using a cereal box because you don't have as much material to poke through. And then I'm going to use the pokey end of the tooth toothpick to widen it even more. I'm not even sure if I'm showing you what I'm doing um, until the, the middle part of the toothpick fits through. And so I just got two more left to do. <laughs> Pokey tool is preferred. I'm in Georgia. You can imagine how it all goes. <laughs> Hi, Zachary. Stabby friends. <laughs> Hi, Jessica. <laughs> Y'all can definitely party in the chat. Miniature parties are the best parties. I'm just saying. I have definitely missed my miniature friends and my miniature get togethers over the past year. So, miniatures are just fun people fun people and I think it's you know just our creativity like we just literally talk about anything because we build anything and everything I'm building a barrel chair out of a paper towel roll you know those are just fun people <laughs> all right so I'm just gonna widen these all right, so now we have four holes, uh, not perfectly centered, that's okay. And we're going to continue forward and make our little feet. So I can now put the toothpick in there. Well, if I widened it wide enough. And there we go. And I can kind of figure out like, how much I want the little foot to stick out and I can kind of look at my reference I think I want it to stick out about that much and then so I'm gonna put a little mark right there now wow that was sticking in there pretty far do I want it in there that far well That'll be good because then I can kind of adjust them. So it's going to be a little bit longer. Bye, Edwina. It's going to be a little bit longer than what I want it to be. So it has room to stick inside of the chair. And then I'm just going to duplicate that and make four of them. Or quadruplicate that. <laughs> So I'm going to move this over. When you get these little tiny bits, it's you got to concentrate so you don't get your finger also with everything else you're doing. Okay, so let me get one more toothpick. So two toothpicks should do it easily for half scale. And I bet you one barbecue skewer would do it well for a 12 scale. Just been having a lot to do today. Danielle, are you working on your um, clock project? Thank you for the super cat, super, <laughs> super cat. That would be awesome. Thank you for the super chat, Leanne. Oh, can you find my 
easy cutter question. There was an easy cutter question. Uh-oh. Um, by Luca Ace. Let me, let me get this last leg cut and then I'll see if I can find the easy cutter question. Okay. So let me move the parts of the toothpick I don't want out of the way. Oh, you're working on the castle prompt. That's fun. All right, so now I'm going to take some toothpicks, or the I'm going to take some sandpaper, and then I'm going to just very lightly sand the very end of the toothpick. Oops. They're very tiny, so... All I'm going to do that is like this, and I'm just rounding out the end of it. It's just a tiny detail, but. Thank you for the recommendation on the 3D printer. Didn't know it took this long to print certain, certain items, but it's cool. Yeah, they take a while to print for sure. My mom's finally retiring in two weeks, and we're going to start watching together. She's into mini villages, but miniatures miniatures and I've been non-stop raving about your channel oh that's awesome I think it's so fun when um, families uh, craft together <laughs> uh, let's see I'm glad that filter helped I'm a new subscriber and I love your videos. Thank you. Yeah, ask the question about the um, easy cutter again. I'd be happy to help because I'm guessing it's it's going to be hard for me to go back in and find it. Uh, yes, I will definitely get your Cinderella castle in the next prompt video. I have it all marked. I have it marked in my email. Got it. <laughs> Okay, so now I've rounded out the little ends and I am going to put it into the chair. And I've got my glue gun. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Uh, no, it's not. I'm retracting that statement. <laughs> so when I'm doing legs, especially if it's legs um, that I need to make sure are even, it's better to do this with a glue that gives you a little bit of movement okay so hot glue by the time I get the first one in it or by the time I get the fourth one in the first one is completely dry so I'm going to use this fabric fix which will still take hold pretty quickly but will give me a little bit of time to move the legs and make sure they're all even so I'm just going to put the glue on top of the hole And I'm going to start getting the legs in the holes. Some of them might need a little bit more encouragement. I should have probably made sure they all went in the holes before I put the glue on there, but oh well. I can always add more glue. takes a little bit of force but it's working it's working okay and one more if it will decide to behave that would be good and then I can start putting them in the correct direction nope this one does not want to play I'm gonna have to add more glue okay I made that hole a little bit wider because the leg was just not going in there. Um, I got a new cutter, but I can't squeeze it. Should I loosen it or something? Okay, let me put this last leg in and then I'll show you, I'll show you the bolt on mine. 
Okay. So I'm just going to angle the legs out. I want them to stick outwards from the barrel. And already I feel like they're looking kind of funny. Um, but it's a barrel chair, so it's all right. Probably could have made these go out just a little bit. But then what you want to do is while the glue is still wet, you want to put it on your surface and make sure that you don't have like a teetering problem or an uneven problem because then you just want to adjust your leg real quick and then make sure that while it's drying, it's sitting flat on uh, the table like so. So let me show you on... Um, <laughs> Um, on this easy cutter, so make sure um, this right here holds it closed. So you want to unlock that, and that's going to open it. It should have a spring inside of it that opens it automatically. So it should be open like this. If it's too hard to push down, there's a bolt right here that you may have to adjust. I've never had to adjust one, um, but if, if it's giving you problems, you may have to do that. Or um, you may have to, like there's some, like, uh, like a little bit of oil, like machine oil in there. Um, I can see it on mine um, to help it kind of move carefully. Now I didn't add that, that came on mine. Um, I can't find one that's exactly mine online. The one that I link in my other videos um, is the one that's the closest to it. So, and then if for some reason the wood is just too thick for you to cut through, what I do is I put, let's see, we'll just pretend this pin, I'm not going to cut through it, is a Piece. but this would be pretty thick and difficult to cut through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through it halfway. I'm going to squeeze through it halfway and then I'm going to turn it and then squeeze through it halfway again. And then I just keep turning it and turning it and turning it. And then what eventually it'll go through. Thank you DM mama for the super chat anti fatigue mat mat mat. Let's pitch in a few dollars to get Aira an anti-fatigue mat to stand next to her table. I'll start. Is that for the floor? Thank you so much. I have one actually um, on the floor behind this desk. Um, but actually, I would love to put that towards another one in the, um, in the room. So thank you. I'll definitely be purchasing a second one because I have another place where I stand a lot. I would be able to use it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're letting this dry. Thank you, Dreaming Cat Studio. Thank you for the super chat. Okay, so we've got our little feet and now it's time to bring out the brown paint. It's just naturally brown. Barrels are brown. I get to use my um, my brown paint. <laughs> Thank you, Rat. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I cannot talk. Hi, Julianne. Okay, so I get to paint brown because barrels are brown. <laughs> Went in and grabbed my <laughs> my paint for. I'm all ready. Thank you, Daniela and Margo. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. All right, let me get a brush that I think will be the right size. And then we can go ahead and get started painting. And it'll start looking like a barrel. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Y'all are too sweet. 
I'll let y'all know when it comes in. <laughs> oh no, not the brown again. <laughs> brown paint forever. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going, it's probably going to take a couple, a couple layers of brown, but I may go ahead and just do one layer and then kind of show you how I plan to do the rest of the barrel. <laughs> Thank you, Diane, or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to get a whole mat to cover the entire room. <laughs> it's going to be like a, like a, uh squishy what are those like a, a bounce house there we go <laughs> yes most amazing people ever for sure turn off the broom it never went away <laughs> so i'm just going to paint in the direction of the slats and then i'm also going to do the inside of the chair because if I have, if I do the upholstery and um, any of it's kind of showing through, I still want it to look like it's the inside of the wood. So I'm going to paint the outside and the interior of the back. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Are you doing a floral print couch? That's my memory from the 70s and 80s. I will show you. I got to let this dry. So I'll show you the fabric. And y'all can tell me what you think would look best for the upholstery. And we can maybe vote. We'll vote on the upholstery for the barrel chair. I think it should be a pretty easy upholstery job. So I'm also going to paint the bottom. Now you can cover up the bottom. Um, I don't think you're really going to see it all that much. So I'm not worrying about it on mine. But if you think... Um, but if you think you're ever going to have like it tipped on its side, or if you just want to make an actual barrel, <laughs> then you may want to cover up the end um, with just like a, a circle of paper. Oh, yay. I'm glad that fixed it, JoJo's mom. I'm glad that worked. <laughs> Thank you, Neen Mock. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Okay, so let me pull out the fabric. So I've painted my little chair here. I'm just gonna let that dry and then I can paint the front side of it. Let me show you the fabric. Let me clear my spot here. All right, so I have just a plain pink fabric, but I thought it was more of like a, a vintage pink. It's like a coral, it's a coral color. And then we have this stripey material which I think is um, a little bit too thick to upholster with in um, half scale, but I liked it, so I grabbed it anyway. And then you were talking about floral. I have a little bit of this material, so it's kind of, I felt like the flowers were kind of like a 70s vibe. I wish it was like a little bit more bright in color, but we've got this floral. And then we have this very exciting orange polka dot. <laughs> um, these are just little scraps that I grabbed. So here's some more scraps of the orange. And then I guess I grabbed this one. It's like a kind of a cream, but it also has flowers. It's kind of like a, um, a dizzying pattern. <laughs> Thank you, Art and Anxiety, <laughs> for whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> mine was orange and brown, absolutely hideous. <laughs> so that's my um, selection here. So I'm going to give them numbers, and then you can put in the chat what number you think. So let's see which, which direction makes the most sense. So we're going to do one two, three, four,
or five. <laughs> My entire stream yard shut down. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. Okay, I'm seeing, oh, and did I do that the same? Yeah, and then five. Okay, I'm seeing lots of four and two. I vote three, uh, most because he said the stripe one might be hard. Uh, the room is actually going to be a wood paneling or like a wood wall. Okay, so I'm seeing twos and fours. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's these two. So we'll do vote again. between orange and stripe. So either put orange or stripe. <laughs> I'm willing to try the stripe. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing Stripe, orange, stripe, stripe, striped, stripe. Oh, stripe might be beating out orange. <laughs> okay, I think I saw stripes more than orange. So, all right, y'all are challenging me today. We're going with stripes. <laughs> uh, we could do different patterns on different ones, definitely. Today we're going with stripe. Okay, stripe wins out for the um, upholstery. Look how big this is compared to this little tiny chair. <laughs> okay, <laughs> going with stripe. Let me paint a little bit more on this. And I probably won't glue the um, upholstery down, but I'm going to go ahead and create it. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably do one more coat of paint on the barrel. Oh, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do one more part on the barrel. Okay. Got to keep my brain organized. <laughs> Stripe on the bottom and orange on the top. I think if I do both, I'll probably just do like a whole different chair and a, um, and a color. I mean, really they're barrel chairs, so you can just get crazy with them and do all sorts of fun patterns and, and stuff. I mean, it's meant to be like a fun set. So um, it might be fun to do a couple of them in um, the stripe. And if the stripe doesn't work, like if really it's just too thick, um, then I might switch to the to the orange. So it'll be our backup. <laughs> orange throw pillows, definitely. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting the legs all painted. Okay, so now we're completely covered. In brown paint. The next thing that I wanted to do on the barrel, which since I have to do another coat of paint, I don't know if I'm actually going to attach it or not, but I want to create the little um, metal pieces that go around the outside of the barrel. So let me get, I know my X-Acto was out here at one point. I keep calling it exacto. It's not an exacto. It's a Fiskars. I've never had a Fiskars before, but I wanted to try it out and I love this one. So I'm going to put a link to this one after, um, after the, um, stream as well, along with the masking tape that I said earlier. Um, I love this. This is going to be the one I buy forever. <laughs> so, um, I've got my Fiskars which I think everyone calls it exacto anyway, but um, my craft knife, there, that's the generic term. Let me get a ruler real quick. <laughs> it's 
All right, so I'm just going to cut really, really thin strips, maybe like a 16th inch. Um, millimeters, maybe like a couple millimeters, so like two millimeters. And I'm using black cardstock just because I happen to have it, but you could also do this with white cardstock or you could pre paint it silver if you wanted this to be silver. So, really thin piece of black cardstock. And this may be where I put some of those rivets that I was talking about earlier with just like a tiny, tiny dot of silver paint. Our whole house was green in the 70s. <laughs> uh, where is your cute doggy? She is, I think she's in, she's in my chair in the living room. <laughs> if she comes in here, I'll grab her and and let her say hi. Okay, so basically, this would get glued. Oh, hold on. It's still wet, so I always touch things when they're still wet. Wet. I cannot wait <laughs> to save my life. Okay, let me figure out how to hold my hands correctly here. So um, this is going to get wrapped around the chair. Probably one at the bottom one in the middle, or one, probably a couple in the middle. I th let me look at my reference. So it's one at the very bottom that wraps around, one kind of 25% up, one in the center, and then one at the top. So there's gonna be basically four lines according to my reference. So one all the way at the bottom, 25% halfway, and kind of 75% at the top, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to glue it on, wrap it around, and then put like some little tiny, tiny dots of maybe silver paint to make it look like um, nails holding it on. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be my plan for that. If I get it painted in time for the end of the live stream, we'll, we'll glue one on. But I just wanted to show that to you before we got too far. Oh, I just smacked the iPad with the ruler. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. So I still have my little circle that was my original template for that top part. I am All I'm going to do is cut it down just a little bit more so that it's a little bit smaller and it will fit on top of my barrel chair. So this isn't the steadiest or the most beautiful circle, but again, we don't worry about perfect here. So, okay. So I cut it down a little bit and I will make sure it kind of fits. Oh, I cut it down quite a bit. Oh, this is the different chair. <laughs> I'm like, it fit perfectly. Okay, this was a different chair that I did with my original pattern, and then I kind of fixed the pattern. So, but that's okay. We're going to keep going with it. <laughs> I have aluminum tape for ductwork. I can see that covering the strip and having some time. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably on the 12th scale use the aluminum tape. That would be a good idea. Okay, so I'm, yeah, I think I'm still going to go with this. I'm going to go with it. All right, so this is quilt batting, and you can buy it. Like, I bought this huge thing. This was queen size quilt batting probably 11 years ago, and I'm still using the same quilt batting that I purchased 10 years ago because, you know, miniatures are this big, so I only use like a tiny little section at a time, but this is, it's almost to its end. I also need to re, I almost need to reorder. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use this as kind of my template and now I'm going to get my fabric scissors out. I'm just 
easier to work with a smaller piece, especially when I'm trying to get it on video. I'm going to do it a little bit wider just because I saw it didn't fit in my chair super well. Went to all that trouble to cut it down smaller and it didn't really fit. So that's because this is the pattern for the other one. <laughs> all right, so cut around. And then I can always cut it down a little bit more. Now it's too big. I'm just going to go with this pattern. You can see the fun that comes with upholstery. Trying to get everything to fit right. Still too big. Plus I have to have room for the fabric to go over the edge. And so I have to keep that in mind because this is just going to be the inside of the cushion. I also have to have room to wrap the edges of the fabric and the fabric's thick. So probably that circle I started with was probably what I should have stayed with. A little bit more. When you get to this scale, just the tiniest change in size makes a huge difference. Whether you're making something bigger or smaller, you can shave off just the littlest tiniest bit and it's, and all of a sudden you've cut off too much. Okay, so I think that will work. So all I'm doing is trying to find a circle that fits on top of the seat and then I am making sure that there's room around the edge of that circle so that when I fold the fabric over that it's not just like falling over the edge of the chair. I think it's safe to say that loud colors are welcome in your house. Yes. <laughs> Every time I cut a circle, it's egg-shaped. Well, this one was a little bit egg-shaped. And honestly, this chair, this was my practice chair from yesterday. It is not a perfect circle any way, shape, or form. But it's still looking barrel-ish. So there is a little bit of wiggle room on this. I do not feel like you have to um, be like a perfectionist. Ooh. I'm trying to decide which side I like. That ha feels like it has more red in it. And this one feels like it has more green in it. They both have red and green. This one just feels like it's a little bit more. What do I want? I think I kind of like this side. I think I kind of like the back. <laughs> Hello from Ireland. Hello from Texas. Okay, so I'm going to take this circle that it took me 10 minutes to cut, and I'm going to glue this on the back to start creating my cushion. <laughs> it's still looking barrelish. Yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to cut out a little bit of this fabric and I'm going to glue it on. I'm just doing one layer. If you want a really squishy, um, squishy cushion, you can do a couple, but again, in half scale, we're trying to cut down on the thickness because if it gets too thick, um, it just, it'll look, it won't look in scale. So you just got to be careful with your thicknesses. All right, so I'm going with the tacky glue. You don't want to use a ton of glue because it can seep through thinner fabrics. I'm not really worried about it seeping through this fabric because like I said, it is pretty thick. Um, but with thinner fabrics, just make sure you're not using too much glue. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad y'all like the backside. Oh, no, mat no art classes. There was a time where I thought they were going to be cutting art around here as well. <sighs> I think one, one of the reasons I loved teaching art, and I'll tell you, tell you why, is because art does not have a, a defined answer. And I think that, you know, in some 
classes and some subjects, there's the answer. Like there's one answer and that's it. And you have to find it and you have to do it the right way and you have to find the answer. And that's important. Mathematics is important. We need people who are good at that. But when it comes to creativity, you have to use your mind and you have to be creative to find the, the answer for you, which may not be the same answer as every, or it's not a defined answer, right? So it's not like, so I tell you, okay, you need to create something. You need to create an artwork based off the word grass. Okay, so grass. And every single kid in my class came up with something different. Was it correct? Yes. Was it different? Yes. And so I think it's that skill of being able to find the answer when there's not a defined answer already that is already predetermined that helps with that creativity not just in the art field, but like, think about, you know, people who worked in the, in like NASA and like space travel, there wasn't already an answer for how to do that. They had to come up with that answer. So that's why I think art and music is so important because you're coming up with answers that aren't already defined for you. And that's a whole different skill. <laughs> and so anyway, that's my, my art talk for today, why art is important. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do little cuts all around the circle so that I can fold this fabric over. And like I said, it's pretty thick, so we're gonna do our best with this and hopefully it will work. So I don't know, I guess I'm cutting about every quarter inch or so. Um, so many art minds and artists subjective so much and it expands the mind to think out of the box. Very true. Never had an art class or access to art supplies growing up, lived in a coal mining town. I'm now a pro illustrator who does comics, RPGs, and even action figure packaging. Big pens were my friend. Yeah, Lawson is the one who did the drawing of Wednesday that's in my Adams family house. So that's an incredible story that you never had an art class growing up and you still went into the artistic field. I was bullied super heavily in school and if I hadn't had some amazing chorus teachers, I don't know how I would have survived. Taking those things away is horrible, agreed. And, you know, I, I know for a fact there were some kids in my school that, that struggled with everything except art. And they needed that win. They needed that win for the day to continue because those other subjects are important. But they needed, you know, they needed that moment because that was where they shined to continue to have that confidence to get through the rest of the day. So... I totally agree. All right, so now that I've cut all these little clips around the edge, I am going to start folding them over one at a time to try and get the roundest cushion that I can. That's my goal. All right, so I think I'm gonna use like the back of a pencil to kind of hold this down. And then I'm just gonna start folding. This is a bit easier in 12 scale. So if you see me struggling and think, I never wanna do that. <laughs> the larger the scale, the easier the upholstery is going to be. Upholstery in half scale is never super fun. And I maybe should have gone with the fabric fix glue. Oh, now I'm getting glue all over my eraser. Here, let me use this. Where's the plastic piece that goes on here? I've lost everything. Where's the lid? I keep forgetting to put the lid on my craft knife too. Okay, here we go. I don't want to get glue all over my eraser. Those erasers are the best. Okay, 
and I'm going to glue them down. And the fabric's also a little bit fraying, so, and that'll work okay for, for my, um, for my 70s attic chairs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it'll, uh, just kind of be mindful when you're picking out your fabric what, what you want it to look like. I'm still traumatized by quarter scale and I'm not even done with it yet. Yeah, I can't imagine doing this in quarter scale. Very brave souls work in quarter scale. <laughs> Half scale, I think, is my limit. All right, uh, let's see how it's looking at the top. It's looking a little bit scraggly, but we can kind of lay down so I've only done one side, so this side isn't done yet. But as you can see, it's fraying a bit here. So I think that'll add to <laughs> kind of the worn look that I'm going for. So I'm not really worrying about it too much. And I can just kind of use some glue and lay down those edges and it will be okay. I was doing this on the table, but honestly, I think it's easier just to hold it in my hand and do it, so. Tip, don't leave it on the on the desktop. <laughs> uh, this reminds me of your armchair video where you warned us beforehand and said something like this might or this part might be a struggle, so just go slowly. If you hadn't warned me, I would have thrown it. Yeah, upholstery, you just gotta take a deep breath every single time. And sometimes you gotta redo it. You'll get there eventually. Upholstery is just like a, uh, it's a practice thing for sure. So we've got a little bit, we've got fabric coming off a little bit of it going here. And so it kind of fit like so. So what I'm seeing is there's some sharp, well, I, know, I say sharp, but uh, sharp edges a little bit um, created by the fabric that's sticking up. And so when I lay those down, it won't look so pointed. It'll look a little bit more round. And also because the fabric's so thick, um, it's making a dip in the, in the center here. And so what I can do if I want this to pop back up is I can cut a little bit more of my, of this stuff. I'm gonna cut just a smaller circle of the quilt batting and I can put, I can glue that in the center and then that's going to pop up the, the center a little bit more, kind of make it a little bit more of a domed effect rather than such a flat cushion that's kind of sinking in in the center. So I'd kind of push the edges down like so. So I'll kind of doctor this, <laughs> this little cushion off screen probably because um, I want to show you how I make the back. You probably, if you're using a cotton or a thinner material, won't have this fraying issue on the edge and you won't have to worry about that as much. But I do like the stripes. I think that's really fun. And once the barrel is complete with all the details, I think that'll be a really cool little chair. <laughs> okay, so let me talk about, or let me figure out the back real quick. Let me get another um, section of quilt batting. And, oh, this is probably a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it on the inside, hold it up against the curve here, and then start cutting it away. What I don't want 
It'll leave a little bit of an extra line because I don't want to cut my chair. So I'm kind of staying away from it. So I have the back here like this. So then I'm just going to go Your shirt looks like entirely different shirts. <laughs> yeah, the camera um, toning is different on this webcam versus the iPad. And to me, my striped shirt on the webcam looks like an optical illusion. <laughs> it looks like it's like moving to me. I don't know if it looks that way to you, but note to self, small stripes, not probably good for camera. So I'm just going to cut off those edges that I saw peeking up over the top. Oh, I'm off camera. Sorry about that. And then double check it again. And it looks like I probably just need to cut off these little corner bits, but it kind of depends on what you want for your chair. You may also decide to have it go over the edges, which is going to be easier in 12 scale. In half scale, I highly suggest you just upholster this one little piece and stick it on the back. But if you want to try having it go over the edge, then you definitely can. It looks good. <laughs> see, okay, so I'm just going to cut these little corners real quick. So they're not hanging over the edge. And then we can upholster this. Yeah. So I need to glue this on here. This is going to be easier. Upholstering circles, never easy. Upholstering straight edges, I got that. I can do that. <laughs> so if you want, if you want to start, start upholstering, try something with more of the straight edges, and you'll get a little bit more used to the process, and then you can work on those curves it's just a little bit more trial and error when you're working with the curves on upholstery so i'm going to stick um also i'm kind of being mindful of the direction of the stripes if i was doing polka dot wouldn't have to worry about it but um the stripes you kind of want to make sure that they're going straight up and down or maybe you want a diagonal look you just kind of be mindful of the pattern. Yes, in the original, um, in the original uh, example, the upholstery goes to the outside of the barrel, but I think it's a leather, and so it's like tacked down. So you'd probably have to hem all the edges and then tack them down on the outside, which I I didn't quite know how to do that, and so I'm kind of going. Um, easy route today and just upholstering um, like I would a normal chair. So that was my plan. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cut off um, any bulk that you can cut off is going to help. And so I'm going to cut off the little wings on the side. And then I can start, I'm going to start by doing the top and bottom because the, the smaller side right here is the top. And I always want the top of the chair to look the cleanest. Oh, inquiring mind wants to know um, blue or green shirt. It's green. The um, iPad is the closest on my screen to what it actually is. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it's not blue. <laughs> this is dark blue right here, this color. That's dark blue, but the rest the rest of it's not blue. Okay, so I'm gonna push this over and push that fabric into the glue. You could use the product Fray Check and the edges of the fabric and then you wouldn't need to hem them, seals them with a clear polymer. Definitely, that is a great idea, especially on the half scale because then the hem, because um, a hem will make it thicker. So if you fray check the edges, you don't have to worry about a hem. So that's a great idea. <laughs> I 
Okay. <laughs> oh, when I was talking about stripes, I was talking about this shirt is striped. This shirt is plaid. <laughs> Which I don't think you're supposed to wear stripes with plaid, but it works. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I've got, you can look at the front. I've got the top folded over. I've got the bottom folded over. So now I'm going to work on the sides. This gets a little bit trickier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up probably fray checking just with tacky glue, um, but then cutting off these edges because if I try or these corners, if I try to lay these down, again, it's going to add more thickness. So um, I'm just going to try and clip those off once I glue these uh, sides down. So I'm going to work on the sides. Mm -hmm. I've got a glue string here. Okay. Half, half of crafting is getting rid of glue strings. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just gonna get this pushed over. Push this side over, pick it up. That's what we learned with the circle one and I'm still trying to do it on the, on the desk for some reason. Although these little um, frayed corners might look cool sticking out. So before I cut those off, we'll put them on <laughs> just to see. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ava. That's awesome. I had a skirt and a top set years ago, the exact pattern color of your shirt. I loved it, recognized it immediately. I really like the, the color, I like green. Brown and green, my ideals. <laughs> okay, so let's put it on before I take the corners off of it. But I think I probably will take the edges off, but you could get a really interesting look by leaving the frayed edges on the, on the sides. And you also have to put the bottom cushion in and check that as well, because the thicknesses start to add up. So there's a thickness in the back and then there's a thickness in the bottom. And I may have to, I don't know my back cushion may extend up over the back just a little bit, but I think it'll work. Oops, it's not glued on yet. <laughs> and then, kind of looks cool. Kind of looks like cat ears. All right, I think I'm gonna cut them off, but it's interesting. All right, so I'm just going to cut off these little corners. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of tacky glue and go over them to make sure that they don't fray anymore and everything stays like it should. Corners are annoying. I agree. <laughs> Very bohemian. Okay. So I'm going to stick this in here. And once you glue it onto your chair, 
you can kind of do a better job of tucking everything in, making sure the fabric's all in the right spot because you're gonna be dealing with glue that'll be holding everything in place. So here's how it's looking. Again, it's not glued down because I gotta do another layer of brown paint. But I gotta do a lot to the cushion, so I'm gonna leave that off for now. But, <laughs> good night if you're going to bed, good night. <laughs> then I'll add the barrel um, pieces like so, and I'll really start to look like a barrel with a chair on one side, or at least that's the plan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, and I guess you could probably leave this um, just the plain wood seat. I kind of like that too. Um, and what I would do is probably just cut another piece of um, like paper and just put it on top. I kind of like just the back of the chair. Let me know what y'all think. In half scale, sometimes it's good to change it up if it's just looking a little bit too chunky. Um, but I kind of like that. And I'll probably, um, we're at the end of the live stream now, but I'll probably um, finish it up and I'll post a picture on Instagram or Facebook so you can see how it looks. And then I will also update the picture on this live stream so that if uh, you wanna come back and um, like go through again how I made it, then you can find the one that has the barrel chair <laughs> in the picture. So if you want to come back and see how I finish it up, um, all, all I'm going to do is, is uh, glue the, do one more coat of paint, glue the back on, and then add the little black strip details. And that's it. So. <laughs> yeah, I do like the stripes. I think, you know, it, um, some of the more difficult materials, if they're cool enough, they can be worth the fight for sure. <laughs> well, I think that's it for today. I've got to go, um, do lunch for the kids and, um, I'm probably just going to go sit in a chair for the rest of the day and relax. And, um, hopefully by next week, my back is good as new. I'm already feeling better. So um, cause then we got Beetlejuice stuff to do, which is super exciting. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. I know I wasn't able to say hi to everybody. Um, but I saw lots of names going by and if you have any questions that I wasn't able to get to, um, whenever this video goes up, just make sure that, um, you put it in the comments and I always try to make sure and answer questions in the comments. So if you have any, just let me know. Thank you all for being here. I hope you have a great day, a great morning, a great evening, <laughs> wherever you are. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. And thank you, everyone, for the super chats. And thank you, Rachel, for moderating. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> oh, oh, and add the craft knife. You're right. I will. I'll write that as soon as I hit in broadcast. So <laughs> masking tape and craft knife. Got it. <laughs> Bye, everyone.